Hello everyone and welcome to this special episode of Hashtag on brand in celebration of International Women's Day. Today we're bringing together leaders, change makers and pioneers from our business and industry who are genuinely shifting the dial when it comes to diverse, uh, diversity and gender balanced activities, programs and movements. My name is Ansel. I am the Chief People Officer here at Dentsu UK and Ireland and I'm delighted to bring uh, you our show live from London here today in our glorious studio. It's my pleasure to welcome Anna Moulton, our Global HR Chief Officer here at Dentsu. Anna is responsible for the group's people strategy. This includes attracting and developing world-class talent, ensuring the business has the right leadership capability to enable growth and transformation, and of course, investing in an inclusive and values-led culture. Anna, you joined Dentsu in 2014 as our regional HR director for our um, EMEA region, Sorry. and you were promoted to your current position in 2017. Uh, you started your international career in HR in the management consultancy Accenture as a graduate on their scheme and you uh, went on to hold a number of senior HR roles within multinational industries including Mattel, toy manufacturer as well as uh, Reckitt Benckiza consumer goods company. And today we are going to be uh, touching upon inspiring the next generation of diverse leaders. And although in the last five years, uh, we have seen many more ris w uh, women rise to the top of uh, levels of companies, women are still, I think, underrepresented, uh, particularly at the top levels, but in some industries at every level. And to change this, uh, companies really need to focus where the real problem is. And in recent research that was published by McKinsey uh, on women in the workplace, that was last year, um, it says that the biggest obstacle that women face is much earlier actually in their career and in a business's talent pipeline, really at the first step into uh, management. Uh, and fi that fixing this broken rung of the career ladder is actually what is key to achieving gender parity. Of course, we can look much earlier uh, in the stage of careers um, and really particularly when we think about how we can inspire the next generation of leaders right from an early age. So before we get started with our conversation this afternoon, a few things are reminded that we will be sharing the full recording after the event and we are hosting on our Spotify podcast. There is a live Q&A as well on Facebook, so please submit any questions uh, through and we will try to answer as many of those as we can as we get through. And also uh, follow us along on Twitter and on hashtag on brand and feel free to tweet any questions there. So Anna, you have had uh, and led a very impressive career to date that many young women will really aspire to. And now in your role as the global chief HR officer for one of the largest media networks in the world. Could you please uh, share with us really your career so far and your journey to success? I can. Um, so I, I'd say I started my um, uh, kind of started my, my thinking about career or having a career at a, at a very young age. Um, it was it was just something I always expected of myself that I I would have a career and hopefully that career would be successful. Although I didn't necessarily want, know what I wanted to do or what I wanted that uh, that career to be. I think I was given a very fortunate start in life, and in, in that both my grandmother and um, and my mother were were quite unusual and and they led very um, and held very uh, impressive. Uh, careers of their own. So I was always raised to have the expectation of mm. myself that I would, um, I'd have a career and I would be independent. Um, and I um, left university like many people do um, with not a particularly cl clear idea mm. uh, of what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something that was interesting, um, that would um, give me some kind of uh, global horizon and, uh, and management um, management consultancy. Therefore, uh, felt like quite a um, quite a good mm. uh, place to uh, to start my career. Um, and that's um, uh, and, and uh, you know, what was great about those early experiences was just the investment that's made in 
um, development and um, the exposure that you have to a variety of situations and, and a variety of leaders. Um, and I, I think quite quite subconsciously that there, there were two things that I, I realised early on is that you should pick the things that make you stand out and be different um, and recognise when you've got a great opportunity that you, uh, you shouldn't waste. Um, and so I, um, I, I think one of the single biggest things that, that helped me was the fact that I, um, I, I, I took the opportunity for, for a few international moves at quite an early point in my career. Um, and by the point I, that I'd got to um, middle management type level, I'd worked in uh, Switzerland and the US and, and the Netherlands. Um, so those, I think, were really, really important choices that, that I made. Um, and um, making the, uh, the, the move out of consultancy into HR was another, uh, another important choice. Again, it, would, it had never been a lifelong ambition for me to pursue a career as an HR professional, but when the opportunity presented itself, um, it felt like the right thing to do at, at the right point in, in my career. Mm. So. Yeah, really interesting. So it sounds like the importance of role models at yeah. an early stage and then really opportunities internationally and then as really taking the opportunity within you know career steps yeah. as, as they present themselves. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, really interesting. And, and have you faced any challenges um, or hurdles along the way that you've had to overcome? Yeah, I, I definitely have. And I think um, I was probably less aware or less conscious of them when I was, um, when I was younger mm. and a, at an early um, point, uh, point in my career. And I, you know, I, I think I think I think about things, and I'm more aware um, of challenges um, now than I um, than I uh, was when I was uh, kind of young and young and fearless. Um, I mean, so, so, you know, so, some hurdles that um, I, I'd say probably the biggest hurdle that I've uh, faced from a, from a point of feeling different has been um, feeling like a foreigner mm -hmm. um, uh, when I've moved internationally and, and not having the power or the capability to communicate in a, in a new language. Um, there's been moments when that that's that it's been very um, difficult, um, but you have no choice in that situation other than just to deal with it and, and get on with it and overcome it. Um, another um, challenge and hurdle that I face, and I, you know, I think it's in, in, one of the things that I believe um, that I can do to, to help other women is just be really honest about how it is. And I'd made a, um, a, a career change at the end of my time at Reckitt Benkiza. I became a at number one chief HR officer in, in quite a small business, but it was a listed business. So it, it, it looked on paper like a, a high profile and impressive, mo uh, impressive move. Um, it was just wrong. The role was wrong. The culture was wrong. And to make things worse, I discovered I was pregnant on the second Monday on the job, um, which in a very, um, it, the very male dominated industry that it was, was, was quite, quite tricky. Um, and ultimately, I, I, left, um, I, I left that role but after um, a, you know, quite a straight line of what felt like success and, and big promotions, that, that was really, really quite difficult. Um, and then the other, and again, this, this is about, I, you know, I think my, my responsibility to be, um, be honest, I think another hurdle that I face, and I'm not unusual as a woman, is just the, the, the questioning, sometimes facing imposter syndrome, uh, questioning my confidence, um, and that, that gets harder, actually, the, um, the, um, the, the higher up the career ladder that you climb. Yeah, that's really mm. interesting. And so quite a few challenges I think then mm. by the sounds of it along the way and how have you how have you coped with those how you know how have you gone about I guess coping and facing into mm. those challenges and then you've said made some key decisions mm. you know, so how have you really gone about that um so I yeah I think um the, the first time I felt like I'd I'd hit a block in the road and faced that and, and felt that I'd experienced failure. I think ultimately I recognised that I was in a situation that wasn't uh, going to work for me and I decided to take some time off um, because I found my, because I felt personally 
horrified and embarrassed about the fact I'd started a job and discovered I was pregnant. Um, I took only, I can't remember, it was either 11 or, or 12 weeks maternity leave, which wasn't really ideal. So I actually made the choice to, to walk away from a situation that I knew wasn't right for me, to take some time off. Uh, to really think about what I wanted to do, and actually that's how I end, that's how I found myself um, joining Dan um, because I decided that the right thing for me was not to continue to pursue number one roles in small organisations, and that I had more learning and, and growing to do from being in a large organisation where I could. Um, learn from a peer or mentor and I came and worked for Valerie um, for three years which had its challenging yeah. moments but Valerie has been an absolutely brilliant role model and, and mentor for me and I recognised in her she was she was you know, somebody that I could learn an awful lot from um, so yes I probably swallowed a little bit of pride I had to you know do a lot a, a lot of thinking but I think made a, um, a wise choice um, and you know, move, moved on successfully from what had felt like a setback. Um, and the other, the other thing that I've, I've, I, I, I believe, and I practice it, although it's not always easy, is the things that make you uncomfortable. At the end of the day, there is you have no choice other than to face into them, um, and you, you just have to do it. And you know, I've had some. I've had some really scary, you know, scary. I had to force myself into some really um, scary situations, and you know, one that really stands out is the first time that I had to present at the Global Leadership <laughs> Conference. It was absolutely horrendous, and I, um, I spent a lot of time working and practicing on it, and I worked hard with Manus, as you know, and I yeah. think he's probably listening to this now, and <laughs> he's recalling the times when we were in a room practicing for that moment. Um, but it, it was it was awful, but it felt so good afterwards. And that, you know, I think it's just knowing that, just learning from like, forcing yourself yeah. to do things, and then you become stronger as a result of the experience. Yeah. So. By the sounds of it, it sounds like the challenges sort of never end. So even throughout yeah. your career, those challenges, you always face them. It's just maybe yes. they're in a different, slightly different shape or form as you go throughout your career. Because I think yeah. it's really interesting now that the global conference, that's a really, you know, one last year really, isn't it? So, um, well, the one last, I mean, doing it for a second time wasn't yeah. much better or much easier, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, so, so we've heard in terms of the opportunities that you've had in, mm. in your career have been really senior leadership positions, including the one you hold today, mm. really. So um, interested sharing with the audience your own experience um, as a senior uh, leader mm. um, and the core elements, really, of being a really strong uh, le and successful senior leader so drawing on your own experience, just interested to hear about that as well as for those that you, you know, others that you work mm. really closely with and have done along the way. What would you say are the sort of core elements of strong leadership? I think you've... I think you've got to like what you do. I think it's very different, difficult to, on a sustained basis, fake it if you just don't like what you do. Um, you've got to enjoy the people that you work with because you can't... Um, you, you can't operate in isolation. You've got to know what you draw strength mm. from. And for me, it's it's the people that I work with every day and, and, and the team of people, including yourself, Anne, that I just love working with. Um, I, you know, I, uh, everyone's got different definitions of, of leadership. And for me, what works is it's been, it's been really honest. Um, so I think honesty and a blend of humility and integrity combined with passion and drive um, is what what works for me personally and just find you know finding the things that give me energy and and give me give me happiness yeah so, yeah so it sounds like passion points as well as uh, as you said enjoying and really having fun along the way but yeah. doing something that you really really do enjoy yeah. and um, having worked with many female mm. and male leaders too are there different qualities that you think are, lead, are needed from whether that's male or female leaders, uh, either that you've seen them bring or that you think are needed? Um, I think there's some differences. I think there's some similarities. I, I think what's most important is that there's real diversity of leadership mm. and diversity can take so many different forms. Um, but I think we... I think we have the strongest collection of 
leaders when people people know what their own strengths and their own qualities mm. are and feel confident to, to bring those. I think some of the, the hardest things for people at the top is that they they feel that they have to live a persona and they aren't necessarily themselves. And that becomes very stressful and it brings out the worst in leaders. And I actually think for, for, me, for, for men, it's, I, I think it's more difficult than it is for women to really live up to a stereotype and, mm -hmm. and a certain persona. So I, th I actually think women should feel free and liberated um, by the fact that you know, female leaders are sought after because they bring different qualities. But at the end of the day, it's about people bringing their own qualities that make them them and just being happy and confident in presenting those qualities. Yeah, so really a reminder to be yourself really, yeah. um, being confident in that, yeah. And um, in terms of your own, you know, sort of, I guess, career journey, and mm. then you've talked about, I think, a, a sort of um, key transition when uh, you had uh, started a family mm. of your own. Have you got any advice on how you have really balanced uh, demands of a career at a very senior level sounds like when you made that transition mm, of starting a family mm. too you were at a very senior level mm. um is there any advice or learning that you could share as well as the support that you had personally mm. and career-wise that really helped you uh, manage that transition mm. successfully well i definitely don't think i always get it right <laughs> i mean i have days where i feel horrendously stressed with the number of things that I'm dealing with. Um, I, so I'd say it has to start with you. I think you've really got to know yourself and you've got to be able to define your own uh, boundaries between ambition and the sacrifice that you're prepared to make to achieve it because um, senior level jobs just come with, with a lot of demands and a lot of responsibilities and, and, and you know as well as I do that you have to fulfil those responsibilities and people might need you at home but then people need you at work and it's um it, it is a constant um act in you know figuring out who who needs you most but i think you've got to know what makes you happy when you stop being happy you're you know you're 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 no good to to anyone in in your life so i think mm -hmm. really owning your own boundaries is is something that i i've learned and that's advice that i um i give to both men and women when we talk about um, their careers. Another piece of advice that I was given, it's quite simple advice, is just never uh, never scrimp on the cost of childcare. And um, I suppose because I um, had um, children at, at, at when I was in my late 30s and was therefore established in my career, I, you know, I was in a fortunate position where I did have the financial resources to um, to, to pay for, for good childcare, but I, um, you know, my, my nanny has been part of my, my family right from the beginning, and um, and so just you know, treating her well and, and making you know making sure that she's a, a key part of the team is is as important as a, anyone that I um, that I work with. Um, I think just be prepared for the fact that it that it is hard, and you you know you will find it challenging. And I think um, what I what I found challenging is probably not so much the, the the responsibility of being a parent, but it just felt that for me everything came together at once. I was yeah. dealing with um, a small child, the fact that my mum was becoming old and ill, and um, my partner was was also making a big career transition at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have moments when it really feels like the wheels are falling off, but. There is always light at the end of the uh, of the tunnel. Difficult situations always always get easier. Um, I think you've got to remember the things that keep you happy. You've got to find the small things that keep you sane. Is what I'd say. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. I'm sure there are many factors that you've mentioned that many in the audience can uh, relate to too. Uh, but it sounds like the importance of having a support network around you is really important too. So you can lean on those. Yeah, you know those individuals at key times. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, and letting it out. And I think those <laughs> those individuals who have heard me let it out know exactly what that <laughs> yeah. means. So. As well as you said, you know, uh, making sure you recognise those that are part of your support yes. network and really enable you.
need to do what you, you, you need to do. Yeah. Um, thank you. And um, then thinking more around the industry, mm -hmm. of course, that... Um, I mean, you know, we've heard through your career, you've been, you know, you've been across many different industries, mm. but our industry now, and thinking particularly in, in Dentsu and mm. media, uh, you know, there, there is a real need to encourage, empower, um, and nurture the next generation mm. of leaders, particularly, you know, in, from a, a sort of diversity mm. uh, point of view, if we're going to really think about innovation, whether that be, in a, you know, uh, innovating with new technology, mm -hmm. um, you know, creative ex executions, and ultimately for us around really making consumer lives mm -hmm. and society better. Um, interested in hearing from you in terms of how you think we can do this to make sure really we do nurture yeah. uh, really diverse talent yeah. to ensure that our industry is uh, in the future in even better hands yeah. than it is today. Yeah. Um, well, I think we have to embrace diversity in its, in its widest form. Um, I think this is not just about our industry. I think mm. it's about society as a, as a whole. I think how we recruit um, and the points that, mm. the points that people uh, join our organisation, I think, yeah. are going to have to be varied. I think we really need to mix up hiring uh, school, early school, school leavers, um, school leavers and apprentices, university leavers. Um, I think um, the way that we approach talent management is something that we need to get a lot better at um, because building strong and diverse talent pipelines takes yeah. time. And, uh, and certainly in, in my experience, that this industry, and we're no exception, is just not as good and not as committed and not as invested in, in talent management as our other industries that I've worked in. And so if we really do want to address um, diversity in, it, in its richest and, and widest form, um, I think it's a question of how we bring people in, but what we do to really invest in people and, and keep people and not see diversity as initi an initiative, um, yeah. but a commitment that requires investment and, and patience. And it's not about the headlines. It's about the results and the outcomes that may not transpire for you know, mm. five years. Yeah, so really sounding yeah. like a, a long-term endeavour really as well. Yes. And as you've said, not an initiative, but something yeah. that is really critical um, ongoing. Thank you. Um, I think we can now go over and have a look um, in terms of we've had some questions come in from our audience. Live. Okay. So um, if you're okay with those, Anna, we'll, um, we'll take a look at those now. So thank you to the audience, the members of the audience that have shared those with us. Um, first question here that we've got that I'm sure uh, many would love to hear your perspective on. Uh, do you think there is a perception problem with senior leadership roles in terms of uh, negative impact when it comes to work-life balance? Um, I, I think, yes, but I don't think it's just a perception problem. It, it, it is a reality that um, in senior roles, you, you have to make choices and you have to give flexibility, but you also have to know when to take flexibility. And perhaps what we are not good enough at doing is showing how people can take flexibility yeah, um, yeah. And um, how true do you think as well that is around potentially a factor that stops women maybe considering or putting themselves forward for senior leadership positions? You said there's a perception as yeah. well as a reality. Do you think it's a barrier for many women in coming forward? Yes, I, I, I think, I think mm. it is just because of the, the multitude of choices that that. It's, it's not just women and I you know I think this is a I think it's a, a, a valid issue for, for for men and particularly the younger generation of men as well but yes I think it is because I you know I I, I, I think people are just more aware of needing to, to make choices and and feel pressure feel pr less pressurized by convention um, than they might have might have done in the past um, but I, yes, I definitely think it is. Um, it, it is a barrier. Yeah. yeah. And so I think your advice that you've touched upon there would be, it, it's sort of a two-way street, but knowing at times as well when you, in, and finding what works when there's times when you need to take that balance too and, and make the right choices. But I think that's right. I think it's been really clear about your boundaries, knowing when you need to give flexibility, knowing when you... Um, 
when you need to take flexibility and, and just know, knowing what make, makes you the best version of, yeah. of yourself in all forms of your life and, yeah. and just being you know, strong and confident and calling the shots when you need to. And I, um, you know, I accept that it's easier to do that the, the yeah. further up the career ladder that you progress. But I think having that confidence to say what works and what doesn't work ultimately earns you respect. Yeah. So it sounds like very much from a sort of personal standpoint as well. Yeah. Um, we've got another question. Okay. Let's um, come in. I think you're going to like this one. Okay. Um, what would be your advice to your younger self when starting out in your career? Oh, I think it would be just don't, don't give yourself such a hard time. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, maybe not be so hard on yourself. Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and do you think that's just when starting out as well, or do you think that's a, a, a sort of mantra that stayed with you too throughout? Um, well, I think I, said, I only learnt that mantra at a later stage. I think somebody actually told me it, and I decided that I'd listen to their, <laughs> um, that I'd listen to their advice. Um, but, you know, I... I am hard on myself and I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things that's helped me successful but it's also you know it's also one of the things that you need to be aware of because it, ca it can be a derailer and it is a derailer for for many people just being too hard on themselves but that's definitely the advice yeah. that I I give my younger self not not that I necessarily um, follow it <laughs> and awareness is a good place to start yeah um, and then another question we've got in from the audience, the final one actually that's come through is, people often talk about, I think there is quite a lot of discussion around uh, what some would describe as a, or what's certainly described here as well as a, as a boys club, mm. uh, in terms of sponsorship specifically, mm. um, around uh, men climbing the ladder quicker yeah. through networks of influence. So I think it's, I guess it's relationships and connections through networks more broadly. Um, and, and I guess specifically, as uh, somebody in the audience looking for advice on how, uh, how, how a more inclusive and sponsorship culture and the benefits of that could be uh, created, I guess, for, for all. Yeah, I, it's a really good question. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I think the perception is, is valid and I think you only need to look at the, uh, the current and recent leadership of the, the, the holding groups. And I was actually uh, just talking about this earlier this morning with, with one of my, my colleagues that it's, um, it, it still is um, and, uh, or in, uh, in our industry until really recently been, you know, been men who have been part of the industry for years mm. and years and years that have, that have ran the, hold, the holding groups mm. and uh, you know, it's therefore quite natural. Um, that the uh, the reputation around boys clubs and, and networks is, um, is is out there. Mm. Um, look, I think it, it comes down to a few things. I think the more women that you have in senior mm. positions, the more aware they are um, of both the perception and, and reality of those um, networks and more relationship uh, driven routes to success. And I, you know, I think make, making sure that they create the, the the equivalent female networks and relationships yeah. that will um, will uh, will help our um, upcoming female leaders and I think it just goes back to good talent management uh, and how we um, how we define and recognize potential and how we give that potential the opportunity to progress in a very um, in a very objective and, and free mm. and fair and democratic way yeah so it sounds like both. I guess men and women can help with that really, yes. developing yeah. networks yeah. equally, but also then those uh, relationships are across the board too. Yeah. Okay, I think that's, they're the questions that we've had come in from the okay. audience now, so that's all good. Um, I guess, uh, as we know, um, to International Women's Day, the campaign this year specifically, um, is centred around hashtag each for equal. Mm -hmm. um, it would be really good to get your own personal perspective um, on what that means to you. Um, I think each for equal for me means giving everyone, um, no matter who you are and what you want to do, the, the, the opportunity to make the choices that are right for you and to feel that you're going to be supported with those choices. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, and I think we, we, we've, I guess, through our conversation too, we've explored the importance of that being early on in careers too, right at the very, very early stages, yeah. as well as uh, for you, you mentioned around uh, role models and how your mother and grandmother uh, really gave you the opportunity to just uh, really believe that you would always have a career and that yeah. was never in question. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank so, you, um, Thank you, Anna. That was uh, really, really uh, insightful. And thank you for sharing your uh, career success and, and journey so far and all the learning and insight that you have had along the way. Um, really do appreciate that. And I'm sure the audience do too. Um, as we said, we have uh, today, we've got live sessions running across the day. Uh, and um, we have a campaign as well, of course, that's running across the whole of March. So we'll hear more about that throughout the month. Um, and the next session up, of course, is at uh, one o'clock for those of you who are staying tuned. Uh, and that's going to be specifically around uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship uh, and how to keep and grow diverse talent. So uh, thank you again. Anna, thank you very much. And thank you to everybody in the audience for tuning in and joining us.